Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. Get off my lawn. It's time for Friday, January 15th. Let's kick it into gear. Let's talk about some news that are happening in and around Missoula and the world. We're kicking things off with MCPS moving forward with having full-time... Uh, in school learning for the kids. I covered MCPS's uh, Board of Trustees meeting, which lasted over five hours uh, Tuesday night. Uh, part of this was uh, due to a lot of public comment and public concern about uh, family members who feel like their kids are falling behind academically uh, than other schools across the state. Uh, other concerns are from the BIPOC population in terms of a Native American mother who is fearful of her kids. She lost a family member and also mentioned that um, by having normal in-school learning is that uh, the Native American community uh, community in Missoula, which is lower than the white community, is being overlooked. Um, but back and forth throughout this, even some of the trustees weren't necessarily on board for full-time learning. But uh, since uh, the city of Missoula and MCPS uh, have been pretty much on par with other communities across the state in terms of keeping the uh, COVID numbers low, uh, they were able to uh, pass this and move forward with the full in-school in learning. And part of the phase two also, as well as they mentioned many months ago, is that if there are always options for kids to do some in at home learning while at the same time the kids can still go to school and uh, have their full time learning experience as well. Through many frustrations on both sides, uh, another note is that teachers in the nation are being... Um, seen in terms of getting on uh, earlier list when it comes to being vaccinated for COVID-19. Um, according to the Billings Gazette, um, Montana is moving higher on the list, but when they will get the vaccines is unclear. You might know by even uh, today, this morning, this afternoon, uh, about exactly when, but all I heard is so far they're going to be vaccinating 70 to more people who are uh, age 70 years and older. The city of Missoula, I talk a little bit more about this in my city council report. Um, there's a couple other new items I'm going to talk about in the uh, in my city council report later in the show, but I just wanted to allude to the fact that uh, the uh, Missoula City County Health Department will be uh, having a meeting for Thursday, so uh, after I take my show, uh, which they will talk a little bit more about how vaccines are going to work in the city of Missoula and distribution. Uh, also, uh, I also mentioned earlier as well uh, is that uh, the University of Montana is the ones that are doing the cold storage um, when it comes to all the vaccines that are going to be coming into the city of Missoula. So far, uh, let's see. In terms of how other schools have handled COVID-19 cases that have uh, popped up, they've uh, been able to close the schools for uh, the day of cleaning, uh, so they were able to reopen soon after. So if there are any incidents in any kind of potential spread of COVID, they've been basically able to uh, halt it at the door and make sure that there is no community spread from um, their school systems, and Montana's been doing really well on that. So there's a lot of good signs moving forward on that as well, while at the same time, there are a lot of big numbers happening. Uh, the biggest number in a single day was about 1,600 on November 14th, um, but today we kick off. Uh, January has seen numbers uh, in the 800s as we kick off 2021. The U.S. unfortunately has seen numbers as high as, uh, am I sure about that? I believe it was 300,000 in a single day, breaking the previous record on December 11th by more than 20,000 people. Uh, total deaths in the U.S. have reached 381,000 people. Um, that's, that's a lot of numbers that are going on here. There's a lot of movement in, uh, in rolling out the vaccine. Uh, Joe Biden, president-elect, uh, is also talking about basically over spending and just flooding the market as he's as uh, as it was quoted um, in terms of having vaccine available for people. In other news, uh, what's affecting the uh, world today is the riots of the capital. The FBI has uh, come out with a statement saying that all those involved will be under sedition and conspiracy to overthrow the government and will be prosecuted at the full extent of the law. Um, I'm not going to go into too many details about this, but as a result, uh, uh, they're also uh, going to be uh, upping security in, in terms of the National Guard. Not too many. It kind of feels as though there's not going to be too many people at the inauguration, um, except for the 20,000 troops, uh, the, the 20,000 National Guard troops that are going to be in the area, because that's how many that were ordered uh, after the riots. Um, so right now, um, 
uh, for inauguration as well. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about entertaining news is that JLo is going to be performing uh, for the inauguration of President elect Joe Biden. Um, and also, I, on another note of news, this is some kind of uh, huge history for old music, uh, magician fans is that the duo of Siegfried and Roy officially has come to an end. Earlier this past year, Roy Horn of the duo died of complications related to COVID 19. Uh, Siegfried, uh, uh, Frisch uh, Bacher uh, died of pancreatic cancer at the age of 81. I, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that first and foremost. Uh, they were known for 50 years of a partnership related to magic. They performed in Vegas for many years until their infamous tiger attack in 2003. From there, they have uh, saw a, a, a noticeable decline in their attendance. Um, in 2010, they officially announced their retirement. Um... So that's kind of what's happening in the news in the world today. I have uh, two movies that I'm going to be talking about. But for, before that, here is yet another uh, PSA of, <laughs> of the new library in which MCAT uh, has moved into. So check it out. MCAT is Missoula's community media resource. NCAT offers equipment like camera rentals and training like instruction and distribution help like cable TV channels, starting your own YouTube channel, a short clip for Instagram or Facebook. MCAT helps people who want to make TV shows, social media clips, and podcasts. In our new home, in the Missoula Public Library, MCAT will be offering classes in camera use, getting the best sound and lighting quality, how to use a multi-camera studio with green screen and other special effects. In addition, we will be teaching video editing on popular platforms like iMovie, Final Cut Pro, and Adobe Premiere. For kiddos, we offer animation classes along with other multimedia activities for after school, during the weekend, and summer camps. MCAT has been serving the Missoula community for over 30 years with the material and the guidance to let your creative side blossom in audio-visual video. Be sure to visit us on the first floor of the new Missoula Public Library. Get off my property, and in this movie, I want to hold my ground. The Marksman, starring Liam Neeson, uh, is a movie where he plays a border patrol agent or guard or somebody who just kind of is like, I'm here, pay me to protect the border from Mexicans. And so basically the movie is called The Marksman and it stars Liam Neeson. Uh, but The Marksman must defend those he would easily shoot just for crossing the border. We look at this movie and see there are good people and there are bad people from Mexico. And this, in this movie, he's going to meet a woman and her young kid trying to escape the cartel. And he must fight uh, his way through uh, uh, cartel Mexican drug lords, drug people, assassins, blah, blah, blah. And um, basically say quip lines like, ha, huh, Mexican. Or can't you can get it because Mexican and can't. All right. So, basically, this movie is going to have uh, small political undertones when it comes to somebody who's just like, get off my country, get out of my country, and, uh, to come to the point where it's like, huh, I never thought of it that way. And then, uh, just moving on, bang, 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 Marksman. Um, I honestly hope that the main character uh, that Liam Neeson plays name is Mark. Uh, up next, we got, in the vein of red on black poster comes Skyfire. Sounds like a, a, a James Bond movie, right? Wrong! This movie is about a guy who lost his wife uh, from a volcano, and f you know, because like, it's, you know, volcanoes and there. It's mostly just gets really dark. I don't know why it's called Skyfire, but it, everything is usually, like, clouded with all the ash. But anyways, fire from a volcano killed his wife, and now his daughter has come back into his life be like, we must fight volcanoes. And he's like, I don't know if I can do that. It's like, if you love me, you do it. It's like... And reluctantly goes on a journey with his daughter. And then a volcano, yes, it has to explode. Otherwise, nothing's going to really happen. And um, things happen. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Montage of people going like, I'm in. But this is, I'm edgy. And this is my character uh, quote. <laughs> I'm a female IT person, hacker person. I'm going to hack the volcano. 
So you can expect this kind of movie. Uh, anyways, a family reunion is interrupted by another volcano, and now they must run away and survive using their wits. And I'm assuming this girl's dad sacrifices himself to save her life. He's like, my wife died for me. Now I'm going to die for you. And then, yeah. Uh, so he he's going to live for that one second to make sure that his daughter lives for all the years he wasn't living because of the mourning his wife's death. That kind of uh, grandioso kind of commitment thing is like, um, and then he like, <laughs> was like, for saving your life, you have to forgive me for basically abandoning you for like 20 years. Um, I don't want to get too much into it, but, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So he holds something open or closed for long enough for her or, and inserts, insert love interest. I'm assuming she's probably going to have a love interest and they get away and name their child, the future child together, Hope or something like that, I don't know. Uh, there's another movie uh, and stuff coming out, but this stood out to me the most. Um, but why can't we go to back to the old days, back to the old John Wayne movies where he would put his hand on people's shoulders and give them a good slug. Um, oh yeah, that reminds me. We have a new dub and stuff of a movie called In Old Oklahoma, or otherwise known as uh, War of the Wildcats. I like the first All right. one. Ooh, think you're man enough to lift me down from this train? Well, listen here, Brenda. I can do anything. I'm a delicate little flower. You can't toss me around like oh, that. Oh, look over there. It's somebody who actually cares about your problems. Well, you know, I can I can handle the rest from here. Oh, can you, you now? You don't have to keep an escort. All right. If you can handle it, then go on out there. He seems a little preoccupied. Whoa, you just got the sickest, newest, nicest car. <laughs> My brother Jim would love this. Um, I think you got enough makeup on, don't you think? Oh man, all this intense heat is making me melt. I just gotta even out the coatings. Well, I guess anything that distracts from those intense shoulder blades you got going on there. Man, you could probably kill a guy with that thing. <laughs> or two. You just don't understand fashion. <laughs> Come on, let's get the st car started. Oh, hey! <laughs> Oh wow, only one car in this whole entire town? This is kind of, uh, underwhelming, if you think. I just took a train here. Well, come on aboard. This chair is very soft. Much softer than those train cars. I'm not cars. done complaining. Oh, <laughs> don't worry. I think I got something special for you. Ooh. Here, put this coat on. Oh, thank you. You're gonna block those <laughs> shoulder blades, otherwise they're gonna pop holes in my wheels. Oh, excuse me? Your shoulder blades are sharp as heck. Oh. Come on I, now, let's I, get things started. I guess I'll take that as a compliment. Oh, don't worry. He just has to turn the thing. Yeah! <laughs> Listen to that engine purr, baby. Uh, are you sure this is going to make it all the way? <laughs> You're scaring my horses. Get that monstrosity out of here, that metal donkey. Get it on out of here. Don't you see what's happening? All these rich people coming to town. Oh! It's old you, the famous guy from the western shows and stuff. Come on aboard. I'll give you a ride to the next saloon or watering hole or whatever the hell we You're talk as about. Cute back as in ever. Days. Well, I know how much you like the beard, so I decided to grow one myself for you. I'm always jealous of people who can grow a beard. Uh, well, you got a lot of stuff. It's what we like to call gentrification. Mm mm mm. I know what it is. All I know is that I hate it. First there's plumbing, and now you got a guy with a car. Huh? What the blazes is going on with this thing? Hmm, come on now. Macintosh, come on, let's uh, fix this car or whatever. Alright, I got dressed up in my car clothes for nothing. And now I'm stuck here in this god one force town, it's terrible. Alright, I guess I'll take the stagecoach. Looks like that metal donkey will work. Mm -mm -mm. I don't like secrets. Mm -mm. Ugh, I'm sorry, honey. It looks like we're going to have to take the stage, coach. Well, as long as you find me a hat, I'm perfectly fine. Uh, someone just picked up an accent while they're here. Are you making fun of the way we talk here? You two should just get a room. Can we go now? All right. He yeah. <laughs> on Dodger, on Dancer, on Vixen, Comet, Cupid. <laughs> Whew. Welcome.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's time for your city council meetings. Um, so one of the big things uh, is that the, usually this is a pretty short meeting, and we're just kind of getting right into the new season of uh, the new season of city council starting uh, this winter or this ja this January. City council starts, of course, on the twenty fifth. Parks and Rec will talk about raising the rates for park fees. Just letting you guys know, there's a, also a plan to create trails in the waterworks hill and a public access road for vehicles. I spoke about this a little bit last year, and this is like kind of like at the top of the off the top of the file uh, at the top of the pile in terms of uh, their a lot of the plans. Uh, as the money becomes available, they're going to create a new park in waterworks hill since it was owned by the former water company, the city of Missoula. Uh, uh, acquired the water company and were able to uh, get a lot of their properties including the Rattlesnake Dam which they're currently working on and this one is another thing where they're gonna have a uh, a trail basically where you can drive up there and there's like a parking lot up there you get up there and you're just gonna wander around Waterworks Hill and whatnot so uh, the expanded trailhead facilities will address capacity needs and provide for a safe parking area with support uh, supported amenities to promote cleanliness, 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 social equality, environmental stewardship, and restoration of the city's uh, conservation land values. Of all the open space cities, um, the Waterworks Hill Trailhead and the North are closest to most of the dense population. The Waterworks Hill Trailhead Improvement and Accessible uh, Trail Project provides a significant opportunity to expand recreation just on the edge of Missoula's rapidly growing urban area. So that was kind of like what I wrote, and I copied and pasted right in my report. Of course, the big star, the big thing uh, that a lot of people are asking about is how Missoula is going to be distributing the vaccines throughout Missoula, and this is a message from our very own mayor, John Engen, about it. Um, health department is uh, getting those out the door with uh, some additional urging, um, and we believe that we will have partners in Missoula's hospitals in particular for uh, as we move toward mass vaccination. Um, in the meantime, I would ask folks, I know it's difficult and it's a, it's a heavy lift to be patient, uh, but uh, we're still getting guidance uh, on an almost daily basis um, with regard to vaccination distribution. Uh, what we're hearing is that President-elect Biden, Biden is interested in uh, basically flooding the market with uh, vaccine, uh, and we will be prepared uh, as those doses arrive to do what needs doing to make sure that our community is healthy and safe. So far, uh, there's not much going on here, but with the uh, confirmation from Dale Bickle, Chief Administration Officer for the city, has been in contact with uh, G Governor Greg Gianforte and so far was able to get vaccines to first responders, which also would include first responders, uh, police department. Uh, the Board of Health met Thursday after I take my show to talk more about this. Uh, John Engen also reports the concerns regarding gatherings in Missoula to protest the Stop the Steal rally and what, many, uh, what may happen during the week of Joe Biden's inauguration as president. He's being calls, and this is what he said. Uh, Police Chief White and Sheriff McDermott are working with both uh, uh, state and federal authorities, as well as uh, uh, our peer cities uh, around the state. Um, we are seeing nothing credible to suggest that uh, anything uh, untoward will happen in Missoula, um, but we will be prepared for that. And I would also like to note that uh, that volunteers quickly cleaned up a Nazi symbol that was on the side of a hill in Missoula, Montana, uh, where a peace sign usually sits. And I would like to note for the record here uh, that uh, whoever engaged in that activity, there aren't many of you and you're never going to win. Uh, so you hate all you want. Uh, we'll be here with love and Missoula will not be a home uh, to hatred, bigotry, uh, or violence. Uh, we're prepared to deal with that head on as we always have been. Volunteers from the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center removed the rocks that formed the swastika and reinstated the peace sign. 
we move on to a new year with new goals and new programs in Missoula. They're not talking about the fiscal year 2022 budget quite yet because that's usually when they start talking about it in late February or uh, sometime in March as well. The Missoula Community Housing Trust is uh, was set up to sustain folks in Missoula who are on the edge of conviction. One of the things that uh, the city of Missoula has been trying to do to end homelessness is to provide homes and places for people, but also with this housing trust, trust would uh, help people avoid being evicted from their homes. So Heather Harp talks about applying uh, to the housing trust uh, committee. Um, applications for um, the housing trust fund in terms of the oversight committee is going to be open until February 10th at 5 p.m. She welcomes everybody with various different backgrounds um, to help form this policy. You do not necessarily have to have expertise in affordable housing in order to make um, to make a dent in this community when it comes down to this. As she stated that night, you learn content by participating. There couldn't be more true than what it really means to be a citizen in this community. Um, Every one of us at this table came to this job not knowing really a lick about what it takes to, to lead a, uh, a community. And it just, we learn it on the job and that goes for all of our boards and commissions as well. We work on this all together. We will actually move the needle in terms of making more room for more neighbors and at affordable price. Um, thank you all, especially to the eight of you that really kind of pitched in on this. And I cannot wait to when we get to actually look at our oversight committee um, and choose the volunteers for that. So far, they're looking for folks for all walks of life, no income value, uh, disparity. They're looking for a lot of different uh, diverse groups of people who uh, are homeowners, renters, and so forth, and they want to be part of this committee, and they will accept applications by February 10th at 5 p.m. You can go on to the city's website for more information about this, but all you got to do is look up the uh, Missoula Housing Trust, and you'll be able to find it. In terms of Missoula's voice in the Montana legislature, uh, Brian Von Lossberg opposed two bills, HB 112 and HB 113, that would affect Missoula's non-discrimination ordinance. So this is a kind of a big deal for transgender rights. That these are anti-transgender uh, bills. Um, I think it's important to note Missoula's uh, role in being the first city in the state uh, back before I started serving on council uh, to pass a non-discrimination uh, ordinance. And um, these bills certainly conflict uh, with that spirit and ethic uh, at a minimum. They're also uh, bad policy from the standpoint of um, uh, small government, which I know um, appeals to uh, a number of, of folks and they, they cross into jurisdictions that the state really has no business being in. I want to specifically- Of course, no votes have been cast on this bill so far, but for more information and how to get involved um, and just kind of watch how the Montana legislation works with their bills, uh, you can go to leg.mt.gov. I'll show you the page of what you guys would be able to see. You can also just Google Montana legislation and go to their official webpage. Make sure it ends in .gov. During this week, the city had a lot of meetings about this upcoming construction season because, hey, it wouldn't be Missoula without construction and as the weather starts warming up. And one of the things that the city of Missoula is also planning to do is to do some um, uh, stormwater improvements for Karis Park uh, during this time while uh, Higgins Bridge is being replaced. Higgins Bridge is, is along the lines of other bridges that are uh, currently being replaced uh, right now and so far half of the bridge is closed while they're basically tearing it up and going to replace that half of the bridge and then once they complete that side they'll open that up for people and then the old side of the bridge they'll close down much like they did for uh, Russell Street in the city of Missoula so they're going to be doing that and also other co couple uh, construction things and uh, it's easier to do it during uh, COVID as was quoted in their meeting because they're not going to be hosting any out to lunch gatherings this year so far. Uh, and of course, the, for more meetings and more information you, and about this and other constructions and upcoming meetings as well, I tried to cover a couple meetings for uh, all the committee meetings that happened on Wednesday. A lot of them were fairly short and a lot of them didn't talk too much about this or that, so I didn't cover them, 
But I just want you guys to know, if you want more information, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. They also have a link to the Montana Legislation's website as well. Up next, we have a long absent, uh, Cindy Farr, with your latest uh, COVID-19 update for Missoula Health Department. And this is what she had to say. Hi, my name is Cindy Farr and I'm the Incident Commander for the Missoula City County Health Department's COVID-19 response. Today is Tuesday, January 12th, and this is our COVID briefing. We've now had 6,955 cumulative positive cases of COVID-19 in Missoula County to date, with 30 new cases since yesterday. We've had 58 deaths associated with COVID-19 to date, and currently 18 Missoula County residents and 12 non-county residents remain hospitalized in Missoula County. We now have 334 active COVID-19 cases. Those active cases and their identified close contacts remain in isolation and quarantine and are being supported and monitored as needed. Remember that all of these numbers, as well as the graphs and figures associated, are on our website at MissoulaInfo.com. The state of Montana is reporting 87,077 cumulative COVID-19 cases, which is up 439 new cases since yesterday. There are now 4,827 active cases with 187 active hospitalizations across the state, and there have been 1,067 deaths related to COVID-19 statewide. The University of Montana has had 501 cumulative COVID-19 cases since the beginning of fall semester, and there are currently 13 active cases associated with the University of Montana. Spring semester started yesterday, so we're definitely keeping an eye on um, any activity that might come as students have returned back to Missoula from the holidays. As we saw declining cases in the and, and the holidays, we wanted to give everyone a little bit of a break from the briefings. Now that the holidays have passed by and we're seeing an uptick in new COVID cases, and as we're rolling out vaccines for COVID, we are going to go back to twice a week briefings. You can expect to see those briefings get posted on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Today, I'm going to focus on vaccine. First, let's talk about the vaccine phases. So phase 1A is a phase that we're currently in, and that phase includes frontline healthcare workers, long-term care and assisted living facilities, and that includes both residents and staff, and healthcare workers with direct patient contact or virus exposure. We are a regional medical hub with thousands of frontline healthcare workers, so it's taking us a little longer to get through phase 1A in Missoula County than it may take counties with smaller population of healthcare workers. We are working with our community partners to refer out patients who signed up to get vaccinated through us to help us get through our queue as quickly as possible. We're also looking to secure a site for a mass vaccination clinic for phase 1A workers, and we're working with the University of Montana in order to aid us in that effort. We will release more details on that when we, our plans are all finalized. If you are a healthcare worker with direct patient contact and you have not yet received your first dose of vaccine, um, you can go to our website and you can sign up through a form. Um, you can find that link at missoulainfo.com slash vaccination. So what about phase 1B? Um, safety is our top priority, and there are a lot of major safety considerations that we're troubleshooting for a mass clinic before we invite the most vulnerable people to come and get vaccinated. The safety of this group is not something that we're taking lightly, especially as we're starting to see another uptick in cases in the community. We're also working to ensure that there are multiple distribution points across the county for vaccine once we get into phase 1B, because that is going to be a very large phase, and we're looking at thousands and thousands of people people that will need to get vaccinated. So stay tuned and we will get you more information once we get closer to wrapping up um, phase 1A and are ready to move on to um, getting those phase 1B folks vaccinated. So last on a positive note, Montana is 10th in the nation for vaccine distribution per 100,000 people, according to the CDC. So while it may feel like the vaccine distribution is going slow, we are one of the best in the nation. And we're currently working with our local partners and the state health department in order to collect the data on how many people have been vaccinated in Missoula County. And we will start sharing that with you and we'll post it on our website as soon as we have that information. So that's it for my briefing for today. It was pretty short. Just wanted to um, kind of give you a little bit of an update on what's going on on the vaccine front. And you can expect to hear from me again on Thursday. 
Um, as always, you can subscribe on YouTube under my name, Cindy Farr, that's C-I-N-D-Y-F-A-R-R. -R. Click that notification bell so you get notified when additional videos are uploaded. You can follow us on Facebook at the Missoula City County Health Department's Facebook page and check out our website at missoulainfo.com. If you are having any symptoms of COVID-19 and would like to get tested, please call 258-INFO and they can get you um, scheduled for a COVID-19 test through our Flynn Lane drive through testing facility. And um, that's it for today. So everybody stay healthy and I will talk to you again on Thursday. Oh, hey guys, welcome back. It is the end of my show, and I wanted to thank you guys for joining me for Wake Up Missoula. Um, there's not much happening with MCAT right now. We are currently still doing a couple uh, live streams for uh, the Zach. So every Saturday they're doing a Zach. If you're interested in your band that wants to uh, uh, perform with a production, whole production crew of MCAT, we're, well, skeleton crew but regardless of that we have some good quality uh live streams for you guys you can get in contact with the zach in terms of performing uh they're always looking for, for, for performers they have a 70 30 uh split so 70 percent of donations go to you and 30 percent of donations go to goes to the venue so that's a nice split for people who want to uh donate and want to uh get involved as well so that is a great experience for a lot of people um Right now, I don't know if there's anything going on here, but I guess in terms of MCAT technology news is that we have discovered ways to basically broadcast on our channel from anywhere uh, at any time. So if you guys are interested in doing more um, public access live uh, streaming and also live broadcast on our channel, you guys can get involved with that by logging on to our website mcat.org. You can also call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. For more information, our phone is hooked up. We are taking calls, but we are not checking out equipment currently, unfortunately. But we are working with many nonprofit organizations, including uh, Missouri Art Museum, uh, Historic Museum at Fort Missoula, uh, Zach, uh, just a couple uh, off the top of my head. Um, I don't know if we're going to be doing any uh, ballet beyond border because around this time they usually invited a lot of uh, people from around the world to perform ballet and dance. Con dance. Uh, I don't want to even say it's a competition. It's more of like a dance uh, gathering, a, a dance convention in a way. Uh, but I'm well, I haven't heard anything from that. I don't want to talk about it anymore. So, <laughs> once again, I want to thank you guys for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. Take care.